come the astronauts. They have an armed guard with an Uzi or some looks like an Uzi. Some kind of machine gun because yeah. And here are these dipwads going out to pretend to go up in a balloon. And here's the balloon. And I don't see the door hatch thing on the top, like, I don't think that opens, and <clears throat> they have sparks on the bottom, they make a lot of steam, they shine a lot of orange lights, <clears throat> maybe they have some real rockets, and the booster rockets, that big tank in the middle, if you want me to believe that that's full of liquid, you know how heavy that would be and that you're going to blast it? You, you got to be kidding me. You know? This means nothing to me. Oh, really? None of them were holding cameras, though. Okay. Uh-huh. And it's turning around. It's already started to curve over because when you fire rockets you don't go straight up you hang around in 0.999 g's and you start going sideways because that's how it's done because that's rocket science and you can't understand it oh they're already in space wow and the hatch that didn't have a seam is now open and somebody's up there filming the space shuttle from the space this is the passageway that the astronauts would have used. As you see it retreating uh, there on the left. This is the passageway the astronauts would use in order to get out of the spacecraft uh, in the event anything had happened uh, up to this time. Now, of course, the only way they can get out, get out in the event of uh, some difficulty is to eject, which they Back can do. The first launch. Uh, even at this point. Now this one, there's definitely no the scene. It's this much more balloon-like. And here's the tube that the astronauts do use every time to escape. Because they're not getting on that balloon. Look how much higher it sticks up. I use the bigger balloon with them. You gotta hand it to them. I mean, they just fool. I mean, they're bold. They just put it right out there. It's in your face. Big balloon. They strap some rockets to the sides. And shoot some flames. Shoot some steam. Shine some bright lights down from the engine holes and up from underneath, you know, spotlights. Dump a lot of water out, ostensibly to cool the launching pad. These mofos. It's in your face. And we had to have four shuttles, and now we have to have zero. This is fantastic. Fantastic uh, use of money. Just over eight minutes into the flight. And then there's ETSEP, when the external tank emptied of its liquid fuel is jettisoned. Two acronyms no one here wants to use or wants anyone to hear. RTLS, which is Return to Launch Site, the most dangerous forced landing right here back at Kennedy Space Center. And AOA, abort once around. That's a forced More landing cartoons, after only but check this guy out here. But I must right tell right you, here. Frank, no one here at the VIP Center is saying anything in acronyms right now. All they're thinking about is the word lift cheer when the clock began again at here at the VIP Center is saying anything in acronyms right now all they're thinking about is the word liftoff the minutes everybody here anxiously hoping waiting watching back to you Frank the president's message that uh, Jules mentioned a moment ago said in part you go forward this morning on a daring enterprise and you carry the hopes and prayers of all Americans with you and astronaut John Young the commander of the mission replied that's a right fine speech we sure appreciate it all right, we have two minutes and 17, 16, 15. What's all this about? What is this shuttle launch? What is this shuttle going to do when it gets up there? 
Does anybody remember? No, because it doesn't ever do anything. All 130 shuttle missions are a waste. The Hubble telescope seemed like it was something, but it's just an airplane. That the whole telescope floating in space bullcrap. Something else. Well, it's all in the computer checkout. There's too many things uh, for any one man or team of men to do. We're monitoring effectively in the control center the uh, the computers themselves who are in, in turn monitoring all the systems of the boosters and the spacecraft. I might add that uh, the president's message was a, uh, was a very moving message. And uh, believe me, at this point in time, I can testify by my own personal experience uh, a prayer now and then helps because uh, it's funny how they just didn't need all that extra stuff around it it's way more wide open it's it was just it's held on from the bottom because it's a balloon let's have another look see they're holding on to it from the bottom and then they just let go from down there and then up it goes that's how simple it is That's a blast of cooling water, Frank, uh, that protects the minus 40 heat tiles counting the from the blast of the uh, recorders solid rocket on. engines. Minus 35 seconds. They shield them so they're not knocked away off. from switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 right, seconds. Right we have gone for redundant set sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. Why are they spraying so much water T already? 15. Is 14, it water? 13, or is it maybe, 10, 9, 8, you know, they're 7, filling it up 6, with the, 5, the helium or whatever. That's why it gets so cold and then all that ice falls down. You always see that. That's why that is expansion. They scripted that one in well because they knew that when people saw it roll over that they'd think something was wrong. Because it is wrong because your common sense tells you you want to go straight up. You don't want to roll over and pitch over. But oh, they want to pitch over. It's the pitch over. Oh, they pitch some bullshit. That's what they do. SRBs. Two minutes, four seconds, standing by for SRB SEP confirmation. <laughs> and too high to use ejection seats for not even needing them. There it is. There they go. Roger on the SEP, Columbia. Let's see with the four. Hallelujah, baby. Mark, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds, confirmed solid rocket booster SEP. Both of them are gone. Now they'll come down. Mark, uh, two minutes, 30 seconds. Board guidance is converging this program. Columbia is now steering for its precise window in space for main engine cutoff. They're at an altitude of over 40 seconds. miles Columbia now. Columbia now 39 nautical miles. miles altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. 
Mark, uh, two minutes, uh, 50 seconds. Columbia, yeah. you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Columbia has right. two engine rotors. A little faster, I thought. Three minutes. Young and Crip and Rayleigh moving out. Now velocity now reading uh, 6,200 feet per second. And that's over 5,000 miles an hour already, Jules. Mark, uh, three minutes, 15 seconds. Columbia now 51 nautical miles in altitude, 66 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 6,500 feet per second. Three minutes, 30 seconds. Columbia now, 55 nautical miles in altitude, 78 nautical miles down range. Mark, uh, three minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, standing by for a return status check and mission control by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia, Governor Green to continue. Everything fine so far. The solid rocket boosters have fallen off. Three minutes, 55 seconds. Standing by for a press to Miko, which uh, says Columbia should lose one inch. Columbia, uh, press stand by. Press to Miko. Columbia continues flying forward. Coming up on the return. Press to Miko. Press 30 seconds, and if they, uh, they'll, they'll be on their way. Mark, uh, four minutes, eight. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark, negative return. They're not coming back here. Woo. Here is Mark, a view uh, from a uh, chase plane, one of the several chase Five planes that have been sent that. out. To uh, help track uh, Capcom, Columbia as it goes. Capcom, 